hit you with another one of them old phenomenal shit. Welcome back to Underleveled. My name is Chris. I appreciate you all being here and for the continued support. So we're about eight or nine subscribers away from our third giveaway. So once we reach that 375 subscriber mark, we're going to go ahead and get one of you guys some nifty games off of Steam. So if you want to support the channel, feel free to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. And well, we'd greatly appreciate all that YouTube stuff that everyone tells you to do. Also, as everyone should know, the holidays are upon us. So I'll be dedicating a little bit more time spent to spend with family. So the Warlock Patron series and the Sky Raiders of Abarak series is going to go on a little break for two weeks. We're still going to get Solace the Crown of the Magister episodes Monday through Friday, even on Christmas and New Year's Eve. But, you know, we're going to take a little break from these harder videos to make. So we'll be back after New Year's with the next episode. But let's get into the <laughs> the nitty gritty of this video of creating Narador the Withering Worm. So now that we have the foundation for Narador, we need to do a little work to make him into an Archfey. We will primarily be using the Domain of Delight PDF you can find on the DMs Guild. Link to that in the description down below if you want to buy that and follow along with us. All proceeds of that PDF, by the way, go to charity. So keep that in mind when you're deciding if you want to get it. And of course, it was created by Wizards of the Coast. Now, we're going to be supplementing everything that we do with... You know, between Fizzbands and this Domain of Delight PDF, everything that we do in those to create Nardor, we're going to be supplementing with Volo's Guide to Monsters, Monster Manual, Dungeon Master Guide, Morn Kane's Tomb of Foes. We're going to be using all those things in to finalize Nardor. I'm probably I'm not going to make a video on all that stuff because you know they only have like little tidbits that I'm going to use. But yeah, we're obviously going to be using other resources to make this guy. Now, after re reading the overview, uh, there are a few things we need to keep in mind uh, when we finalize everything. An Archphase Domain of Delight is shaped around the Archphase personality. It's a reflection of the Archphase emotional state. The Feywild in general reacts to emotion from the plants and weather to the wildlife. Even the time and distance between things is mutable. So it seems every, literally everything in the Feywild is prone to change. Now, Nardor is not going to have any affiliation with the Seelie or Unseelie Fey. Uh, this is to help make it easy to adapt them to any campaign. I know not every campaign is going to have the Feywild, you know, with all the uh, official courts and whatnot. People are going to want to sometimes, you know, make their own types of Feywilds. I just want Nardor to be easy to just plop into anything. Also, spells casted in the Feywild can be altered by the Feywild. An example that they give is Revivify. Creature restored by this spell wakes up wondering if their entire life was just a dream. So, there you go, DMs. Have, have, have fun with that. You know, kind of maybe take a look at some of the spells that your players have and, you know, spice them up a little bit for the Feywild. Now... The first table is to determine the weather. However, as we just learned, the weather can easily be changed, you know, by emotional states and whatnot. And it suggests that the weather changes, I guess, naturally about every three hours. So I'm not going to pick like one weather type for the domain and we're going to stick to it. It's going to change every now and then. But after we're in the final version of Nardor, I'm actually going to add weather effects to his sheet that you can add to this table just to add a bit more variety that's a little more themed after a uh, moonstone dragon. Also the size of the domain is determined by the archphase power. It's also possible for the domain to be bordered off, hidden, and the archfey can 
prevent things from leaving or entering the the domain so we should also keep that in mind considering how often things in the Feywild can change the next session next section on Feywild guides can come in handy now keep in mind Nardor is like a parent figure to all things in its domain so just keep that in mind when you're role playing. And if your players are talking smack on Nardor or something or plotting against him, you know, they're going to get ratted out. If someone in the, in Nardor's domain overhears that, they're, they're going to tell him. And as you learned in the previous video, they do have uh, telepathic communication with Nardor. So he will almost instantly know. Although the Feywild guide I'm making is simple and unimportant, obviously the DM is free to do whatever they see fit with this guide. Now the guide's name is going to be Pip. He's a giggly goblin warlock. I wonder who his patron is. And his quirk is he always harkens back and compares things to the good old days. So he's going to be a crotchety old man. Now, under Fey Outlook, we learn some very basic lessons from the sections reciprocity, that's a word, hospitality, and gifts. It all pretty much boils down to treat others the way you wish to be treated, and it kind of sums up all of that, pretty much. Uh, when you give a gift, most of us would want one in return. I mean, we are greedy creatures by nature. If you were a good host to someone, visiting your home, you'd kind of expect them to be a good host to you, right? Fey contracts. Something I think would vary from campaign to campaign. Personally, I wouldn't use them with Narador, but I feel, but you know, feel free to use them if you get inspired. I just, they just don't really make that much sense to me. But what does make sense is Fey curses. Now that makes a lot more sense with Narador. You have to remember, Nardor is being created to be a warlock patron. The, the pact itself is a sort of contract. If he does anything for you, I mean, he may demand something done in return. He's not gonna, you know, ask or you know, hey, let's make let's make an agreement or whatever. Like, no, if he tells you to do something, he expects you to do it. Considering Nardor is a Moonstone Dragon. I would use one of the following curses, but you can obviously roll or choose any. I would use number two. You gain 1d3 levels of exhaustion until the curse ends. These levels of exhaustion can't be removed. That's because I um, I remember correctly, one of the breath weapons from Moonstone Dragon kind of like knocks you out or whatever. So I thought that kind of fit in with that. And number six, Moonlight burns your flesh. You take 1d10 radiant damage when you start returning moonlight. Moonstone Dragon, he's got the... the he's gonna have moonstone light emanating from his scales as one of his features from the last video. And he's got his moonlight breath and stuff like that. And I gave him the spell moonlight. So, this makes sense. Ending the curse could literally be anything from a choice on, you know, the chart something you make up or simply creating a task that got you cursed in the first place. Fey abodes you could use to enrich Nardor's domain of delight. However, it was my intention to have all of the denizens of his domain of delight kind of live in Nardor's resting space to sort of reinforce the parent figure aspect of Nardor and as a keeper of knowledge. To sort of symbolically show he treats people like books in a library. You'll get the idea. You'll get the idea when I make his domain, which is actually going to be in the uh, next video. I see that that first chapter actually had a, a bit more depth to it than I originally thought it would. And to make sure this video isn't super long, I'm going to be splitting the implementation implementation of the domain of delight content into uh three parts so in the next part we're going to go over chapter two and get the attributes we need to turn our door into an arch face so I, in the first video we got the foundations done to nardor the dragon 
in this episode, we kind of set the foundations for kind of Nardor a fey. And the next episode, we're going to make him into an actual archfey. And then after that, we'll finally be getting into the creation of his domain of delight, aka his lair. Which, that is going to be interesting because I'm taking aspects from green dragons, black dragons, fairy dragons, and the domain stuff. Like, we'll be mixing, mixing and matching a lot of stuff into making his domain of delight. So that'll probably be a long video. But with that being said, that's going to bring this episode to a close. Uh, I'm sorry it's a little shorter than you know maybe some of you were expecting, but again, holidays are upon us, so I wanted, to sh but I did want to get you guys something right now. And but we're gonna be back after New Year's with the next episode, turning Narador into an Archfey, and I'm really excited about that. But if you have any input, advice, suggestions, you know, hey, use this resource, use that resource, or whatever. Feel free to leave a comment uh, and then down below. Remember, this is in, this is something for all of us. This is something that I want all of us to contribute to making. So feel free to let me know what you think. But with that being said, have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a fantastic holiday. Go spend time with your family. But I'll see you after New Year's. Have a good one.